We have a serious topic to discuss today, though, because the Proud Boys were sentenced this week in Washington, D.C. There wasn't a lot of news coverage about this. In fact, I was a little surprised that even conservatives on X, formerly known as Twitter, weren't talking about these sentences a ton, but these sentences are quite something. The former head of the Proud Boys organization, his name is Enrique Terrio, he was sentenced to 22 years in prison, even though he wasn't at the Capitol on January 6th. Can you tell us, Julie, what he did actually? What was the content of the text messages that the prosecution was holding against him? What they charged him with and why he was convicted when it's pretty obvious that it was an unjust conviction? Right. So Enrique Tario, as you said, is the head of the Proud Boys, and he, with others, were charged with seditious conspiracy, um, basically to try to overthrow the government, something comparable to treason. Um, But to your point, most of the evidence, and I followed the trial, and I was there for closing arguments, and of course the sentencing, most of the evidence related to protected speech in group chats uh, where FBI informants were embedded, nonetheless, uh, as well. So a lot of the evidence was just inflammatory rhetoric, language that was used in some of these group chats talking about Donald Donald Trump talking about the election, talking about, you know, 1776 and how they weren't going to put up with what happened in the election. And then, of course, plans to not only travel to Washington, D.C., but assemble groups of people uh, at the Washington Monument that morning and then going to the Capitol. To your point, Enrique Tario was told was thrown out of the city. He was arrested the day before for burning a BLM or allegedly burning a BLM banner in December of 2020, and he was told to leave the city, which he did. So he wasn't even there. Um, And now here he is, the longest sentence imposed by any judge handling these January 6 cases. Um, I think it's three years more than Stuart Rhodes, the head of the Oath Keepers, got. And so this is um, not just to send a message about what can happen to you if you protest uh, a rigged election or support the wrong candidate. But also, this is a very nice way for Judge Tim Kelly, a Trump appointee, to get his name in the history books, which is exactly what he did. 